now that we've done the table geometry and the photo geometry, let's go ahead and do the chair geometry. The chair geometry could be tricky, so if you do have a 3D application, maybe now is a good time to use it. But if only having NUCX, then using a few cubes could do the trick. So the procedure is the same as before. We're going to select a few tracks from the chair section, and we are going to create a cube. Then tweak the rotation and the scale of that cube, and keep doing that for having one cube per part of the chair. We'll then use a merge geo to plug it into the scene. So let's go ahead to our footage. Let's open up the camera tracker so we can see the points, and let's go ahead and basically select one point from the point from the from the chair. So I'm going to make sure that that point sticks to the chair. So I'm going to just make sure that that point is always present. I'm going to select this point over here because it has a good projection error and I'm going to right click and say that I want to create a cube. Once I create a cube, as you probably already guessed it, the cube will show up randomly next to the projector, to the camera tracker. I want to make sure that this cube is not here but actually in our modeling room uh, section. So I'm going to plug in that cube into my scene and I'm going to start by using this cube to model the top of the chair. So by putting the scan line render, the merge node that was at for the preview into the viewer, and of course change it to camera view, I can see that there is my cube. My cube is now attached into the actual position of the chair. So I'm going to swap to 2D view just to see where my cube is and I am also going to attach the cube into the checkerboard so I can see a totally modeled uh, cube. Now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to bring it to full screen and I'm going to basically go into the first frame where I see it the more and I'm going to start moving the sides of the cube so they actually fit in to the geometry of this chair. So they need to, of course, it needs to be much smaller here, and it needs to be much, much longer in this side. Of course, at this stage, this is, of course, it has all to do with the actual uh, modeling the cube around the chair. So you need to just keep changing the settings of the size and the facets of the cube until it actually fits in into the chair size. And that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to just keep repeating that section, uh, that operation to make a cube for this side, a cube for that side, for that one, and for that one. So I'm going to basically have one, two, three, four, five cubes. Now the procedure is the same. You always have to go back into the 3D tracker. In the 3D tracker, use the points of the 3D tracker to attach cubes to. Then, once you've attached the cubes, bring it into your modeling 3D section and just basically tweak them until you have the cubes working for your scene. Since we don't want this to take hours and hours in this tutorial, I am going to basically pause my tutorial and I'm going to, when I come back, we're going to have the chair already modeled, but you can just open the script if you want to see exactly uh, what I've done. Okay, so welcome back. As you can see, I've modeled the entire chair. So I've basically used one, two, three, I used six different cubes to model the chair. As you can see, the, ch the cubes are basically just, I've just did section by section, and then I used the merge geo to just merge them all into one single geometry piece, so I could then link it up into my scene. So this was what I done. Uh, you can always go back to the script that uh, comes with this tutorial, so you can see what I've done there. And there you go. Now you can see, it's not perfect yet, but we can just keep adjusting the geometry until we see that it's a perfect match. So we have the top of the table, not the side of it. We have the photo frame. We have a pretty good geo of the chair. This is going to be important later on when we project some of the blood textures and spatters that we have, and also when we do the relighting of the chair. So, now that we have the chair geometry, let's just follow the simple steps to actually do the walls geometry as well. So always keep in mind that we always have to check the original plate with the merge node for preview. 
and use the checkerboard material to the geometry so we can still see it in the 2D view. So let's just start by doing one of the walls and then you can also try yourself making the rest of the walls. It is a very simple room as you can see we have a wall basically two separate walls in this side on the on the uh, on the back here and then two little walls as well on the side. So let's start by putting a wall in the back side. So again, we always have to go back into our projection setup from the camera tracker, put the viewer to the camera tracker, open up the camera tracker and basically try to select few points from the wall. So I'm going to probably select one of these uh, green points on the wall here. So I'm going to select this one on the top here and use shift select to select three more. And then I'm going to right click and say I want to create a card. Like before, the card will show up uh, not connected to anything so you need to make sure you bring in the card into the modeling section that we have and we have to open the card and call it wall in this case it will be the back wall that's gonna be the card we have I'm also gonna connect it into the checkerboard texture and I'm gonna connect it into the scene now let's watch it through the merge nodes for preview purposes that we have and let's start to orientate our card. If you look closely, the card is positioned on the correct place, but is it is way too small. So I'm going to scale it up. And as you can see, the rotation of the card is completely wrong. So I am going to basically rotate the card. Rotate in Y as well. I'm going to basically try in 90 degrees. I don't know if it's going to work, but we can always try. So it looks like it's on the correct place now. And I'm just going to scale up the card so it fits a little better into our room. I'm also going to translate the card. Now, since I don't want this tutorial to be too long, and since we've done it now three times, I'm sure that you could I could put the rest of the walls and, and you can try yourself putting the walls from this moment on, the other two walls that are missing. But if you do have any problems, you can always look at the final script that is coming with this uh, tutorial and you can always double check if you've done it the correct way or not. So I'm just going to pause the recording for a minute here and I'm going to bring in the final, I'm going to put in the final walls in the scene. So welcome back and now as you can see uh, I basically as I've uh, gone, gone ahead and make the entire geometry for the entire room. So I basically have six pieces of cards pretending that they are the wall of the room. I have some cubes to make the geometry of the chair. I have a card to make the geometry of the, um, of the photo frame and a top table uh, card as well. Again, I won't repeat this, um, I will repeat it again, but if you do have 3D knowledge, if you do have uh, 3D application knowledge, you should always try to do this in a 3D application, because it is much easier and it becomes much more perfect if you model it. With that in mind, let's go ahead and advance to the next uh, uh, section of our, um, of our script. Now, at this stage, we are going to start projecting some textures. So, now that we have basically a room, we can start placing some textures in the walls in the table. We want to control it layer by layer. So let's make one scanline render node for each of the elements to merge on top of the footage. Don't forget to use the same camera to input to all the separated scanlines. There is no need to copy the camera, you can just use the same stream that we've used before of the camera and just keep piping it into the scan lines. This way we can always composite all the new elements just like if they were from CGI. So let's go and pick up the first one which is the glass.psd. So let's select it and hit control 
or command X. So we actually paste it in another part of the script. So let's just bring it down here. So as at the moment we have stage one, which is prep and lens distortion. We then have the main comp stream. We then have stage two, which is the tracking. We then have stage three, which was the modeling of the room. And now we'll have stage four, which will be the actual texturing of other elements. The idea would be that to bring one of these broken glass textures, which I believe we have several of them. So we have this one. We also have this one. So it is to use one of these glass textures that were done by, by the um, use of free brushes in Photoshop would be to put one of these cracks in the actual photo frame would be to put the crack in one on this glass of the photo frame. So to do so, we need to start by picking up the geometry of the actual photo frame. This is not to use that card, but actually to know where it should be. And we need to, of course, bring in a camera and a scanline render so we can use the 3D system. So let's go ahead and actually select the scene in the scan line, just copy it, and let's paste it down here. We also will need to bring in the actual geometry of the photo frame as a reference, so I'm going to copy it as well. I'm also going to paste it, so now I have it here on my scene. I am also going to bring in a new card, a 3D card, so I'm going to actually go and use the tab button and then write card to have a new 3D card. This 3D card will be called Broken Glass. And this will be the 3D card that we're going to use to actually put the texture of the glass. We're going to pipe it into the scene as well. Now, one thing we do need to do is to plug in the camera into the 3D camera we had. Since we already made like a small stream coming from here, let's just continue the stream from this camera. So let's use another dot by using the dot button, connect it to the stream of the camera that we had, and let's basically lower it down to so it becomes a stream. And I'm going to connect my camera input of this scanline render into that stream. So now we have the same camera connected to both the 3D tracker, to the modeling room of the CGI, and also to this new texture that we're making. One thing we did need to do as well is we need to connect a merge node so we can actually merge the result of this scanline render, which will be the broken glass texture, on top of our footage. So let's bring in a merge node by hitting the M button. And let's pipe the A input, which is the foreground, into the scanline. And let's go ahead and pipe the background into the stream of the footage. Remember that we did. So now, as you can see, the footage, we basically, the only thing we did so far to the footage was that we've undistorted the footage. We then now are going to merge a new texture for the broken glass on top of the footage. And for that, we just need to use a merge over operation. 